I didn't really want to live this way anymore, but you know, I couldn't like, I would, I would say, okay, I'm going to play three hours of a set in alarms. No matter what happens, you quit. I'm down eight buy-ins, uh, recreational players everywhere, 20 tables of GG, throw the phone into the corner, you know, next, next time I like come around, it's 10 in the morning. Yeah. I'm intrigued to dive in with your high volume and how you, uh, first of all, went into that kind of grind and then how you've been able to optimize it over the years. So it sounds like almost from the off, you went into multi-tabling long hours. I'm curious to know, um, did, was there anything that set you up for that? Did you do any gaming in the past? How were you uh, able to jump straight into poker and do a lot of tables or was there a transition to, uh, your kind of multi-tabling approach? I guess I just always played as many tables as I felt I could manage because I just thought it's like, you're going to have more money if you're winning on more tables. Um, and back then everything was full ring. So it was nine handed and the game I just thought was pretty slow. Like you don't really raise in the early positions. And so I would just get as many tables as I could. And back then it just happened to be 24 on poker stars. Like I probably would have played more if it was possible. Um, and then as I moved up the stakes, I was learning about supernova elite, you know, and like how much you had to play and how many, how much you had to rake and stuff. And I would do the calculations and think, okay. Maybe this could be possible even at 100 NL or definitely at 200 NL. And then as I became more of a consistent winner and established in the 200 games, I thought, okay, you know, I can actually do this. You know, like all I have to do is play these 5K hands a day or whatever. And like, I, I can do it. So I just fixated on that, I suppose, at first. Yeah, I'm guessing for you, you've just got very much into the process of playing high volume, multi-tabling, just waking up, showing up and just putting in lots and lots of volume. For yourself, mm -hmm. like, did you find the grind draining at all? Like you're playing long hours, I'm guessing, not much breaks, um, loads of tables. For you, was that a sustainable grind from the off? Because I know other players who uh, maybe try the multi-tabling high volume approach, they'll run into problems with fatigue, burnout, mental drain. For you, did you have any of those issues? Um, not at all, actually, not for, the first 10 years of my career probably like when i first started i could play all day every day and then you know i go to sleep and i'm dreaming of poker i'm like playing hands in my sleep you know like moving the mouse around but sometimes i've got five cards or whatever and i'm just i'm, I'm dreaming of poker in my sleep and then i wake, wake up and one minute later start a session you know online and just like just permanent poker for weeks and weeks and weeks and that's just like how it was and i guess i had this intense passion or something at first like real like burning desire and like when I wasn't there I was thinking about it and I just wanted to play all the time um and of course that fades but for me it took very long it wasn't until maybe 10 years or so when I had my first burnout so what was this burning desire that was driving you to play and think about poker every hour I'm actually not sure I never I never really questioned it. I just play. I, I, from a very young age, of course, I always wanted to be successful. And then I guess I kind of found this opportunity and saw how successful you can be. And I, I liked the fact that it's just, at the end of the day, it's just you versus you, you know, like the guy who works harder in poker is going to have the most success. And I kind of enjoyed that feeling of like, you put more in, you get more out. Um, and I mean, I always had problems with, with losses when I was losing. I had definitely entitlement tilt or something, and I would want to get my money back somehow. And this is really when the like the very long sessions started, I would say, when I was losing. What are the, what are the very long sessions in your framing? <laughs> um, so yeah, it would start out, I'm playing 200 NL, and maybe you lose 10 buy-ins. And then I play the whole night, and until the like 12 o'clock the next day one two or something and then you go back to even and i would be like okay you know got back to even got some break back money it's okay sleep three hours until 5 p.m and then like start grinding again when i was at university um and this would happen like quite regularly and then i got into this mindset of like you know if you keep playing you will get the money back it doesn't matter like of course you can go to bed but like you don't have to. If you keep playing, it will come back. And after you do it 10, 20 times, you, it really gets fixated in your head. And then, yeah, it got to a point where I was playing and I used to play a bit of a splashy style and I, I don't, I wasn't a very good player. 
and I was I was losing like 35 buy-ins at 200 an hour in one session um and I've been playing for five six hours and somehow in my head I was like you know if you keep playing it will come back and this session ended up being 50 52 hours or something I played like foot round the clock twice like two times no didn't stop for any food or anything I had some Lucas aids or whatever and like at the end you know I did get back to zero I did grind it all the way back and then went upstairs saw my friends they were like where have you been for the last two days and I was like yeah I was just grinding you know I fell asleep on the sofa and then woke up the next day started grinding again it's just it's just how it was I just loved it Wow, that is, that's extreme grinding. I'm surprised the mind is able to uh, function for that many hours with the amount of tables you're playing. I don't know how many decisions you would have made in that kind of time frame, but it would have been very, very extreme. So I'm wondering, like, in these states, there's, there's obviously an element of high volume will even out variance over time, but then there's mm -hmm. also the uh, kind of counter arguments that when you're in a compromised state and you're kind of chasing losses, you're playing bad pocket. So for you, like, what was kind of some of the trade-offs you were making? Because I'm guessing there's a lot of sessions where these things were happening, you started badly and you played longer and you put in lots of volume. How would you say that like affected your overall win rates or what were some of the uh, maybe errors you made in your strategy or challenges you faced when you're playing high volume chasing these losses? Um, I think when, you, when I was down a lot in these sessions, I would always try and increase the variance when I was playing, you know, just like three bed, five birding hands that could be calling and just really pushing max variance. Um, but I, I did believe that, you know, not having losing sessions is going to help your win rate overall. But in, when I look back at it, I think if I'd, whenever I was down 10 buy-ins, if I just quit and gone to bed and then played again the next day and sort of restarted the, the hole from there, I would have had a much better win rate overall. Um, and like when I would look back through these 20 K hand sessions or this 50 K hand session that I played, you know, I'm looking back and there's, there's 30 stacks that you've punted off, you know, and, um, I think if I was fresher or more focused or playing less tables, this would never have happened, but it was just my approach and it was just all I ever knew. So I never really thought about doing anything different, to be honest. Yeah. Did you have any troubles or challenges when you try to, uh, like maybe take time off. I'm sure you've experimented with things over the 14 years of, should I play through this volume? It seems like your default is to just grind, grind yourself out of a hole. I'm guessing for you, like maybe the thought of taking some time off, taking a day off, taking an early day would have found some resistance. So did, did you find any challenges from taking any time off from poker? Um, yes, huge challenges. I've always found it very difficult. Um, I used to have a rule that like if I lost 10 buy-ins and like I couldn't get out of the hole and I did this like three or four days in a row then I would I would be forced to take a day off but you know in these days off I would I would just be sitting around like just thinking about it and like really just wanting to get back to start playing and I used to find taking holidays pretty difficult because poker was always in, in my brain or whatever I just wanted to play and thinking okay while I'm not playing, other guys are getting better or playing or winning leaderboards or whatever it was. Um, and if I'd been losing, let's say I was down 20 buy-ins for the month and I had a holiday tomorrow, I would find it very, very difficult to go on this holiday because I would feel like, you know, I haven't earned it. I've I've been losing. Like I, I want to get back, back to even or whatever before I take my holiday. And this was always like a really big problem for me and had huge impacts actually in life. I would have to feel like somehow earned it. You know, I couldn't zoom out and see the thousands of buy-ins that I'd won before. It was just very focused on the short term. That's very interesting. Yeah, you mentioned having earned it and it feels like you're getting some of your self-worth from your achievements in poker and the volume you're playing. And you're almost like dicing that up into um, small segments as well, winning weeks, winning months, winning days, mm -hmm. rather than like looking at the bigger picture. So for you, like in terms of when you were trying to get balance. I'm guessing at some point you didn't, you didn't always just play every single day and, and not stop for a minute. When you try to get some balance, did you uh, notice, like, as you mentioned, like your self-worth was challenging, like you didn't feel like you uh, were worthy of days off, worthy of taking breaks. And like, how did you find balance? I'm asking this question because I feel like there's a kind of gift and a curse you've got here where you're a machine mm -hmm. playing high volume. Then also you're trying to uh, 
be happy, live a good life, do things away from the poker tables. And every time you want to take a break, poker pulls you back in because like, you feel like that's how you get validated. So for you, I'm wondering how uh, you managed to find space in the last 14 years to do things away from poker. Um, yeah, to be honest, it sounds kind of sad, but like I never, I haven't found this balance. Um, I've never been able to find it. It's been something I've been speaking with, with my therapist about um, for the last few years, um, trying to find ways to find this balance. But like all the trips I used to take when, not with my girlfriends, but with like poker guys, it was always poker trips, you know? So it was fine with, they had computers there and you can go to Mexico for six months, but when you're playing 10 hours of poker every day, you know, it's like, sure, it's a trip, but it's still, it's still work, you know? And um, for the first, let's say 10, 12 years of my career, maybe 10, I was very happy, but not, not happy, but like, I didn't mind that I didn't have a balance. So I was just like, you know, I'm all in, this is what it takes to be successful. This is how it should be. This is, I'm doing the right thing. But then as I got, you know, to 29, 30, I didn't really want to live this way anymore, but you know, I couldn't, like I would, I would say, okay, I'm going to play three hours of setting alarms, you know, like George is telling me, okay, set an alarm when it goes off, no matter what happens, you quit. And I would set my alarm for three hours. I'm down eight buy-ins, uh, recreational players everywhere, 20 tables of GG, throw the phone into the corner, you know, next next time I like come around, it's 10 in the morning, you know, and I like, you know, I really did feel like some kind of addict or whatever. It was like really, like like I'm not even there and I was completely incapable of stopping the sessions. And I don't know, I just couldn't find the balance at all. So right now I'm, I'm complete cold turkey, just no playing at all while I'm trying to, make some disciplines in other areas and find some other passions and stuff. And hopefully when I come back, maybe the desires to do the other things that I like will be strong enough to keep me from staying up all night and playing poker. Um, so, yeah. Well, although you've struggled with balance, you've definitely not struggled with volume throughout your career. So I want to transition into uh, how you how to master the high volume grind. So for you, you're someone who obviously naturally has a gravitation towards wanting to play. But there's a lot of players now who chase leaderboards on GG or chase high rate back deals and want to want to master their their own high volume for themselves. What are some of the lessons you've learned throughout your high volume career of things that work effectively in terms of being able to maximize your output of volume on a daily basis that you could maybe relate to the audience? Um. Yeah, I think if you want to be like a, a high volume guy and, you know, I've always thought that people should decide, do you want to play high volume mid stakes or do you want to play high stakes? Like these are the, if you want to make a lot of money, these are the two approaches. You can't be one of these guys that just plays small volume mid stakes because sure, you're going to win some money, but you're never going to win a lot of money. Um, so if you really want to play and like go down the road that I did, which I wouldn't really recommend but you really want to play high volume. First thing you need to have simple strategies. You can't be getting too complex in playing six different bet sizes on the turn and stuff and just like play simple strategies, range bet wherever you can and stuff. Um, and, you know, also in the pool that you're playing, really try and find a way, look at the, look at the biggest winners in this pool, try and see what they are doing well and, really try and find a way to maxim maximally exploit whichever pool that you're playing in. Because, you know, at mid-stakes, no one is playing well. So there's ways to have huge win rates, even if you're playing like a lot of tables and yeah. Great advice. And how does your routine and consistency on a daily basis help with high volume? If you're doing this amount of hours, I'm guessing you had some sort of structure to your days. So could you talk us through uh, how your days would look on these high volume days, weeks, years? Yeah, I mean, when I was when I was younger, it was wake up, have breakfast, grind the whole day, have some have something to eat, uh, go to bed for years and years. But then, as I got a bit older, you know, and I was trying to do some fitness or do some things in the evening, I would try and play one session in the afternoon, take a break, have some food, get prepared for the night, and then play the big long session in the night and see like where it went. Yeah. How long were these sessions? Uh, I try and play three, four hours in the afternoon. And then the evening session, yeah, let's say I'd start at eight or nine. I would try and play until one or two. 
but I was very open to myself that like if it was going badly or if the games were good, I can play till midday. Like it's no problem. Like I I was I was prepared for it. You mentioned doing more fitness stuff, and I've heard that you were recently doing a fitness challenge. Mm -hmm. How has that impacted your life overall? But in terms of poker, your ability to concentrate, your energy levels. Yeah, when did, when's that been a, a part of your life, and how has it had an impact? Um, I even when I was grinding a lot, I was trying to stay a little bit active and do at least a couple things a week, you know. Um, and I would say this is actually like the one piece of advice I would give to the young guys or people playing a lot of volume is to try and stay physically active. I always had my best results when I was going to the gym and not like super, super hyper obsessed um, with poker. It definitely helped. Um, and now I feel very clear, you know, cause you get this brain fog from grinding and like it really does disappear when you go to the gym and stuff.